depends on gender deaths. In the ACC constituency, just to listen to their perspectives and how the church is responding. And one of their recommendations going forward was that we as women can, are not able to fight this battle alone. And so we need men leaders from our churches to be brought on board to supplement our voices as women. So this was a very strong recommendation. Of course, the AACC in, in our strategy, we, we, we plan to have this forum for men, men's forum for gender justice, but this came also uh, on, on 19th of May from women. And so because our general secretary is a strong gender champion, and he was also involved in this meeting and actually recommended, highly recommended that men be brought on board. So I went to him and asked him how, how to come up with a, a group of men. How can these, how might these men be chosen to have a consultation? So his response was, why don't you ask women? Because women would know better which man supports their agenda work. And so you are here because the women in your churches recognize your agenda work. So we went behind your back to ask women about those men, those men champions for gender justice who have been supportive of their work. And so why are we here? The main objective is to mobilize and engage men in a consultation to accelerate actions against all forms of gender injustice and domestic violence now and beyond the pandemic. And so in this consultation, First of all, we will create awareness of the state of domestic violence and sexual gender-based violence in our regions. We also share best practices by men champions in responding to these vices. And finally, we will identify and provide recommendations towards a gender-responsive approach by men to all forms of GBV at the continental level during and beyond the pandemic. Our expected outcome, as I have said earlier, is to establish a continental network of men to enhance gender justice during and beyond the pandemic in line with the AACC strategy 2019 to 2023. So I'll now take you uh, through the, the program. Uh, we will have the welcome remarks by the AACC General Secretary, who will also invite the keynote speaker. After that, we will have uh, regional reflections and recommendations and that session will be, uh, the speaker will be from uh, all the, the regions in the AACC constituency, and it will be moderated by my colleague, Reverend Dr. Lesmore Ezekiel. Then we will chart the way forward together after, after which we will have the closing remarks by our General Secretary and uh, closing prayer. So, I am humbled this morning or this afternoon. I take this opportunity to recognize the presence of the ASCC General Secretary, the Reverend Dr. Fidon Mombeki, who is also the faith champion for gender justice in Africa, to give welcome and opening remarks. 
and as well invite the keynote speaker. Over to you, Dr. Mombeki. Thank you very much, Dr. Lydia. I hope my, my video is on. Eh? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, thank you. I have been given 10 minutes, as you see in the program, and usually I don't want to spend one minute more. It's e even better if you can spend less. With these online meetings, it's even more important. Therefore, sometimes I'll be quite brief. And I start by welcoming you all to this virtual consultation. Indeed, we had intended to have it uh, as a physical meeting, but it is not possible for the reasons you know. Still would like to extend our very big gratitude for you for commitment and your time. The goal of the consultation has been given to us uh, by Dr. Lydia has just repeated them and we read it in our concept notes. So I am not going to repeat any of that. But there are a few things I would like to speak, to say from the uh, ACC position as a background, in addition to what Dr. Lydia has said. We think that we know, all of us, that the churches have been at the forefront of working for gender justice from the time of missionary, the first missionaries, whereby the rights of women and girls were sought and promoted, very notably through opening a way to education, to formal education for girls, which was very liberating. However, we realize that until today, we still encounter more and more areas which need to be addressed towards gender, gender justice. And these areas, some of them in the past, were never seen as unjust. For example, now we are fighting FGM, female genital mutilation. But in the beginning, it was not seen as a violation of women's rights. The same as child marriages, early marriages. I read today that in Malawi, it has gone up exponentially during these three months because and people are just being uh, given away for marriage because they have been a, a, at home and no protection and nothing. And in the past, it was seen as normal. But every generation continues to discover new areas to include in the liberation struggle for gender justice. And of course, some aspects of scriptural interpretation we are not really aware of the negative impact they have on women, and some until today in some churches. For example, the area of equal chances to leadership for both men and women was in the beginning not seen as part of the liberating gospel. Now, at a certain point, there was even New discoveries led by the movement, which we generally refer to as feminism, which raised new questions. This movement was led by liberated women who challenged many things which were always taken for granted or not even realized or not seen in areas, for example, of ordination, leadership hierarchy at home, and at work, equity in marriage, property rights for women. Now, this movement, feminist movement, was vocal and persistent in ways not used with the churches we are not used to, and the society in general. The victims of gender justice, injustice are predominantly women. And then liberated women, enlightened women, 
lead the fight from their own experiences and the new possibilities they see. <coughs> now, there have been many global initiatives which churches have been running in the ecumenical movement. All were geared, I need my water. <coughs> All were geared to seek gender justice. For example, the church's decade in solidarity with women from 1988 to 1998, and the decade to overcome violence, both of which were announced by the World Council of Churches. Though, and we realize that though not only uh, like the decade to overcome violence was not specific on GBV, but GBV played a major role as the most common type of violence in all communities around the world. Now, these initiatives of the ecumenical movement had mixed success. We at the AACC are convinced that the poor results of these initiatives were caused by an unintended fact that they both were seen as women initiatives. So most churches included them as main parts of focuses of women activities under women desks, which are ex expectedly led by women. At the end, very few men had even an idea of what was being spoken about. And the participants in these initiatives were mainly the victims of injustice and the perpetrators were never reached. Now, this is exacerbated by the fact that in many cultures, men are still unwilling to be taught by women, leave alone the fact that indeed men have very few occasions of looking at things just like men. They don't have meetings, they don't have trainings, we don't even provide them in churches, so they have been left behind. Another problem is that <clears throat> these movements and initiatives for gender justice have been perceived by men not positively as intended to promote the weaker partner, the victimized equal partner, but rather they were seen as negatively as being revolutionary against men. It is therefore not unusual for men to have hostile reception and defensive reactions even before they hear the subject matter. They have seen a strive for denied rights by women as a strive to steal from men their rights. And of course, we know that this is not the case. On the other hand, <clears throat> we have to acknowledge that this approach of perceived women against men hides a very big fact that in all successes achieved so far, there have always been men fighting for gender justice, for the rights of women. Without these men, success would have been even much less. But these men, among whom I count myself and many others I know, have not been adequately recognized both by women, but also by other men. And their contribution to gender justice has stayed in the dark. Therefore, the AACC in its strategy for 2019 to 2023, identified the need to establish an AACC men's network for gender justice. We are very sure that this fight for gender justice has involved men, always. Now we want to recognize them. We also seek to identify more of those men whom we call champions. We wish to call on them to spearhead the initiatives for gender justice, mainly among men since we believe it will help men who are not easy to be reached by men, by women or not willing, but it will also convince the few women who are not committed to gender justice, because it's not only men who are against this fight, but there are some women as well who, real, who see this as like to, over, to change the, the order of creation and things like this as we are doing injustice against men. And some, of course, have these theological, strong theological positions 
on the ideas associated with husbands being the heads. We believe by reaching out to and engaging men in this struggle, we will enhance gender justice. And for that reason, this consultation is a step in the right direction. I wish you all the best participation, even though it would have been deeper and better had we met physically, which we are going to do later. With those few remarks, I'm going to encourage you that let us continue to engage very robustly. And I'm so happy that many of you have uh, volunteered and have accepted this invitation. And I would like to invite now <coughs> Reverend Father Evangelos Tiani, a, a priest from the Greek Orthodox Patriarchate of Alexandria and all Africa, from the Orthodox Diocese, Archdiocese of Nairobi here in Kenya. He's a senior lecturer of, at the Orthodox Patriarchal Ecclesiastical School, which is called Archbishop Macarius III of Cyprus Seminary in Nairobi, Kenya, and also teaching at Bishop Gatuna Theological Institute in Kiambu. He is also the chairperson of Side by Side, the uh, Faith for Gender Justice Movement, the Kenya chapter. To you, Father Evangelos. Thank you very much, uh, General Secretary, for the opportunity and for this chance uh, to be here. Uh, uh, allow me to use the Kiswahili word uh, to say Bwana Asifue, praise God to all of you and uh, thank you uh, for being here. Allow me to first thank the General Secretary Reverend Dr. Mumbeki, who is uh, known to me actually uh, on uh, the, uh, the instances we have met are actually gender uh, related and therefore I want to thank you for not just being a uh, um, uh, the gender champion for the whole of Africa uh, in writing, but also in practice, because this is something that I have personally witnessed. I also want to thank Dr. Lydia, who heads uh, the department that this uh, forum is happening through, and want to congratulate him uh, for being awarded the Rand Frank Award for Education and Scholarship uh, on Postcolonial Interpretation of the New Testament and Advocacy for Gender uh, Equality. I have actually worked with her in a lot of this, and I'm really, really proud of the same. I also want to thank Christine uh, Onyango, who has really uh, been working uh, to make this a reality, and especially on the correspondences. Uh, I want to start um, this. Uh, <clears throat> if we can go to the next slide. I want to start uh, this by taking you through some of the of the definitions uh, that uh, that we will find in gender related uh, aspects i don't want to go through them per se uh, but i want to highlight a few of them uh, that are of uh, great concern when we talk about uh, men because you have the the main uh, presentation and the one that i want to deal with is masculinity this is the culture specific ideas roles and behaviors that men are supposed to live up to in order to become accepted members of their own community. And this actually only shows how culture influences how we recognize ourselves on how or how we are recognized as men. And the next one is uh, uh, patriarchy, which is the act and principles and practices of males having superiority and control over the females. And this, uh, because we live in a patriarchal society in Africa, is a day-to-day -day event. And finally, is equity. Now, what gender justice seeks is equity. And uh, it doesn't mean that we have to be, that men and women will be equal, but it means the rights and the responsibilities and the opportunities of a person will not depend on whether they were born or a male or female. And that's the whole uh, idea. Uh, it's a balancing of uh, the powers that are there. If you can go to the next slide. So uh, when uh, we look at the challenges that the church faces when it goes through gender justice, the first thing is the terminology that we use. It's very political and uh, it is used to handle a lot of other uh, matters that have nothing actually to, uh, to do with faith or that differ completely with faith. For example, homosexuality and all of the other aspects of this kind, when they are touched, church leaders don't want to deal with gender justice anymore. 
just because of that. Another thing is because it is considered a Western idea and not um, per se African. And most of the time it is because it is our partners uh, who require uh, this, especially when they are funding our programs, they require us to do this. It's not an inborn thing in most instances. So uh, today I want to highlight that we must look at gender justice as a moral injustice issue. If at all we shall deliver, the said justice to those who are oppressed. And we can go to the next slide. Now, how do we learn uh, our gender roles? Uh, what we do as men or women or girls and uh, or boys is learn through the process of socialization. And we are socialized through so many institutions. Especially we are socialized through education, uh, the education system we went through, the political systems that exist in our own countries or even in our own villages and societies, the economic system, our, our religion, uh, the laws that we have in our countries, the cultures and tradition uh, of uh, whatever tribes we come from. All of these create what we consider as men and women. And uh, the fact that uh, we consider ourselves to do this then uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, challenges because now to undo all of these things that we have learned is a challenge. Men are considered as breadwinners. They are told they are the protectors. They are the people with a lot of strength. Well, the women are considered as caregivers for our home, for our work, for our churches, and all of this. Now, when we talk about uh, gender inequalities and men, uh, we insist um, uh, there is a problem. Because why is gender injustice too much on women injustices and not on men? Does it mean then uh, that men have no issues to bring on the same table uh, that women are bringing? Does it also mean that uh, men are that bad, that they are only the perpetrators and not the people who are affected by the same? Or is gender justice about fighting and dethroning men? In fact, these questions uh, are, are, are created out of what people actually think. So gender justice is most of the time focusing on the most oppressed people, not because men are not part of the people who are oppressed, no, but because a lot of uh, women and girls are highly affected. We need to change this, and that's why we are having uh, this uh, forum today, because men are, are purported to carry a lot of power necessary to fix the injustice, but most of the time they do not do that. Why? because nobody wants to let go any power that they have. This is normal in any situation, and it seems as if uh, we are, this is affecting a lot of aspects. Now, when we come to sexual and gender-based violence, which is why we are here today, this year we have noted a lot of uh, wife and husband battery, a lot of rapes, a lot of teenage impregnations, and all of these are only a few of them that are recorded. The rest of them are actually not recorded because most people don't report this uh, to the police or actually they didn't go to hospitals. Now, if we go to the next slide, you see that the perpetrators uh, of uh, sexual and gender-based violence are mainly people who are very close to the survivors and the victims. They are mainly the partners of these uh, victims and survivors. Uh, some of them are family members. Others are community members. Others are security personnel. And unfortunately, it's even worse for persons with disabilities because uh, if, you, if you have a, a physical or, or, or mental impairment, then you are even at more, you are more exposed to this kind of um, uh, violence. And uh, sexual violence occurs at home, outside the home, at work, transport, everywhere. You cannot actually say this is the place that it happens. It happens almost everywhere. That's why this is a pertinent issue for us to discuss. Uh, and these are some examples, and you have the slide with you to see some of the examples of uh, SGBV that most uh, uh, women actually go through. And if you look at them, then you realize why women are being mentioned. Because most of this uh, sexual and gender-based violence um, uh, happen to women more than men. For example, early marriages, it's not the boys who are told to marry early, it's women. Forced marriages, it's the women that are forced. Uh, the forced pregnancies, uh, FGM, all of this is not about men. It's mainly about women. That's why women ke keep being mentioned. If we can go to the next um, slide, please. Now, when we look at men, some masculinities and gender norms are a disadvantage to men and boys. 
Because how society has brought us up, we say that real men don't get sick. And most of the men actually, frequently, then don't seek medical advice. Real men don't cry. When you are grieving, then you don't cry. That affects you. Real men don't speak much. Uh, then you get depressed, you get stomach ulcers, and all of this. A lot of the things that men go through, they do not understand actually. They are going through injustices just because the society has named them, uh, has given the, or put them in such a situation. Now, how do we deal with these uh, uh, negative masculinities? If we can go to the next slide. <clears throat> This masculinity causes a lot of the sexual and gender-based violence that is happening today. Because when men want to feel like men, uh, they want to express uh, the power that they have over their wife, over their children, and this essentially end up to have uh, violence in their homes. Some men feel they are entitled to power, uh, to status, to money, to jobs, to women. And so they become violent when seeking to take what they believe is right free Yes. A lot of men actually fall into substance and drug abuse because they, because they say this is manly, this is how to be a man. And then this end up being one cause of having a lot of violence at home. Talking about gender justice is only the beginning. To achieve it, a lot of things have to be done. And that's what we want to deal with in the next uh, slide, if we can go to the next slide. Now, we have a, an, several anomalies in gender justice without men. Men have to be involved in gender justice. If they are not, then the term gender has to change. Because the term gender relates to matters of women and girls, as well as men and boys. And when men are not there, or they are not considered, or their issues are not raised, then it means we are not talking about gender justice, but we are talking about uh, men and, uh, I mean women and girls justice. Another anomaly is most sensitization programs on gender justice have actually been about women and uh, girls. So they don't actually sensitize men and boys, and that's why we need to wake up to, uh, from uh, here henceforth, as we are led by the General Secretary today, to sensitize more men uh, and boys on matters of uh, gender justice. Another one is sensitizing women and girls only has brought violence and conflict. When women uh, go to forums where they learn about gender justice, they come home and then they realize there is a problem and then they speak about it. That then bring violence because the men and women are in those homes are not sensitized as these women and girls are. Then the men and boys, uh, gender related injustices have majorly been downplayed in a big way. Again, women and girls are majorly considered as victims with men and boys as perpetrators. If you are told you are the perpetrator, then you will not want that thing <clears throat> or that uh, forum that is calling you that. And uh, again, the victims who are men and boys, in some instances, then are unattended. Now, gender justice is not a struggle between men and uh, women, boys and girls, but rather an issue of power and powerlessness. And we have to insist and teach about this a little bit more. Because if men are brought on the table, then there shall be a dialogue on what is a problem and how to balance this problem of power. When men and boys are considered to have power at an individual level, most of them feel powerless at the individual level. In fact, they do not understand the power gender justice keep insisting on. <clears throat> so that's uh, something that we need to fix. Because most of the men, when they are told that they have power, they, they actually don't know what power we are talking about. Then why then do we need to engage men and boys in gender justice? In the next slide. <clears throat> the first one is because society and culture has for long given men more power than the women and girls. That's why gender inju uh, injustice always faces men in a harsh way. Of course, it's because society has given all the power to men. And uh, that's why we need it uh, uh, removed in a way and balance, not completely, but balancing it. Another thing is injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. For example, we who are Christians, when the body of Christ, when one person suffers, then the rest of the body of Christ is suffering. That's why men need to be engaged in this, because when women and girls 
go through all of this uh, violence, then it also affects uh, these uh, men and boys. It's also the godly thing to do. Our God is a God of justice. And therefore, um, the, it's uh, the same God for men and boys, as well as for women and girls. It's also a personal uh, uh, agenda for men. Because some of them go through a lot of uh, violence, domestic violence. Most of them, because they say real men don't speak out, then they don't say it. They don't tell others what's happening to them. But the reality is, it's personal to them. Again, it will reduce the pressure on men if they are engaged in gender justice. Why? A lot of men, for example, are told, you know, a man has to be sexually uh, very active and with a lot of vigor. And men keep uh, looking for ways uh, to be very active. Even when uh, they are at, uh, when they get sick or at a certain age that they can't manage, they have a lot of pressure on them. They take a lot of drugs that actually affect their bodies. And some of them actually become violent because of this. But it's because society keeps telling them <clears throat> that they have these things that they do not have. They can set the platform for change and transformation. And this is why today we are speaking because we as men and boys have this uh, uh, power to do so. Now, what roles then can men uh, have on gender justice? One is to review the power given to us by society. We can, uh, though because we have the privilege, we don't recognize it. The women and girls are more aware of this uh, than we do because they do not have this power. Two, we sensitize others on the equality sought in gender justice. Because equality is not about equal, uh, men and women becoming the same, but rather uh, it's about spreading the rights and the responsibilities and opportunities uh, uh, for everybody and that it should not depend on them being male or female. The third one is build their own capacity and raise awareness on gender justice and gender equity. And fourth is to transform our own selves, our sons and neighbors on how to handle women and girls. If we do it practically, story by story, it's going to go uh, to, to everybody. Now, what actions can we do as, uh, as uh, Christian leaders uh, to, to, to engage men in gender justice? One is sensitize men on matters gender justice. Two is encourage men to be available fathers and caregivers. When men uh, become more fatherly and caregivers and available at home to their wives, to their sisters, to their daughters, then they see the challenges. Let men take, uh, be taken through the effects of gender injustice and gender equality. And especially, even take through men through this, ask them to ask their sisters and their daughters, uh, what do they do that affects them? And they will see that from their daughters and their sisters' uh, eyes or their wives, and then they will change. Don't blame men for things they did not do, but rather uh, transform the society, because it's a society that gave them this power. So transform that. Reach out to men to contribute in bringing gender justice in their homes and society, uh, as we said. Other actions that we can do is encourage accountability so that people can take uh, personal responsibility on the actions that they do and not just say it is our culture, it is uh, the gender norms, it is all of this, but if you do something wrong, then you should take responsibility. Again, identify local tradition and norms and masculinities that uh, need to be changed. Identify biblical verses on gender justice and gender equity for men groups. Again, seek and share with consent the success stories of men who made a difference or confessions of those who have actually discovered they had failed and the consequences of what they did in the past uh, and can help a lot. Again, and in the next slide, teach gender justice and equality and uh, rich men where they congregate in sports, in cultural and religious forums, in places of work. Uh, again, explain how men will benefit from gender justice and equity. Provide the safe spaces and support groups. Encourage work policies that are family friendly. For example, uh, men should take paternity leaves. A lot of them actually don't take this. Uh, they, they want to work even when their wives are, are on maternity leave. Encourage the positive use of power and use the scriptures uh, to sensitize uh, men on this. Uh, as a conclusion, <clears throat> The final slide, please. <clears throat> uh, on, uh, if, if we look at the, the conclusion here, gender justice is about men and boys, women and girls. And that's not something we can run away from. And we must bring uh, men and boys in this conversation because it is part of their day-to-day -day, uh, life. It's something that they need to do. 
Men and boys are necessary stakeholders, and some of them, as we have highlighted, are already affected, but nobody is talking about them or giving them the space to do so. It's possible to change negative masculinities and gender norms and trends by our patriarchal cultures, and we must do so. The church has a responsibility to seek the God-given justice and dignity for women and girls, as well as for men and boys. The church cannot only seek for women and girls, it, can, it should also do for men and boys. Although there are no direct rules and don'ts in scripture, it's good to use the Bible uh, as a leading uh, uh, <clears throat> platform to open sensitive gender discussions. There is still much unfamiliarity in the church on gender justice, including uh, the word gender, which is not in the Bible, but we must uh, seek to learn more about it, even if it is not uh, written in blueprint in the Bible. We have an individual and collective responsibility to practice gender justice and teach it to others. Whether we are men or women, we must take this responsibility because we, we serve a God of justice. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. I know you have my slide, a, a longer version, which you can uh, read through um, in a better uh, pace. Thank you very much. So thank you very, very much indeed. Uh, first of all, to Dr. Mombeki for the welcome and opening remarks that have set the pace for discussion. And thank you too to our keynote speaker, Father Evangelos, for that great, great teaching. It's a whole seminar that can be taught in one or two days, but you have summarized it in 20 minutes. Very, very useful uh, points with which we will engage. So at this time, we will have 15 minutes of you know, questions and answers or just comments. Yeah. Whoever may have something to say, please, you are welcome. Okay, the one with the hand up. Hello. Uh, Hello. Uh, you can hear me? Yes, we can. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, Ma. All right, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Reverend Maporo from Zimbabwe. And my submission is that I appreciate so much the presentation. Uh, it has touched on a very pertinent subject where uh, society has tended to blame um, the men for every ill. Yet it is all about the society, the old, the old subject of upbringing, how the boys have been brought up uh, to become men. So I think, thank you so much for those insights. I think we really need now to step up and, uh, and go out and engage uh, men, and not the only men, but also traditional leaders of, uh, of our society, so that we do make a difference. Um, because uh, uh, the, the whole notion that, that has gone for a long time is to do the um, pushing the agenda for women emancipation and the girl child at the expense of the boy child who is left um, in the classroom. They take out the girl, the girl children, they prepare them. But to tell you what uh, some of us would do pastoral counseling, emotional counseling, you, you find this challenge that uh, you have an empowered girl going to get married to a man who has not been empowered. So that already creates a problem for, for the future marriage. So I thank you for for those insights that we need to balance it up, um, uh, propping up the, the, uh, the activities of men so that they make up with the role that is already been pushed for women. Thank you. Thank you very much for that input. Do we have someone else? I can't see properly. No, you can't see properly. <clears throat> yes, please go ahead. All right, thank you very much for the presentation, Reverend Father. This is Reverend Nathaniel Lafram, and I'm representing the Evangelical Presbyterian Church, Ghana. Um, thank you so much for the insights that you've had in this presentation. I just have one question. Uh, something happened here in Ghana, I think about two or three days ago, where 
a 90 year old woman was lynched to death by two other women. Yeah. And my question is, how do we men intervene in such situations? And that is number one. And also, when it is from the same gender, let's say male to male or female to female, could that also be classified as gender-based or sexual violence? Thank you very much. Okay. Father Vangelos will take that up later, but anybody else? Mm -hmm. Dr. Les Morris? Somebody with a hand, right reverend, sorry I can't see properly because it's fire. Yes, right reverend? Hello? We can, hello? I am Samuel. Yes, please. Sam, Samuel. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yeah, uh, it's a high time that uh, we have woken up to this issue of uh, gender inequality. Uh, as we can see that uh, Jesus has, had uh, sometimes had, uh, had intervened in the issue of, uh, of, 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 of uh, women. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, when uh, a certain woman was just about to be beaten up uh, uh, due to the law of Moses, in the book of John 8, 3, the teachers of the law and the Pharisee brought a, a woman caught in adultery. They made her to stand before the group and said to Jesus, teacher, this woman <clears throat> was caught in the act of adultery. Uh, and in the law of Moses, this woman was just about to be stoned, but uh, Jesus came in the middle and uh, started to enlighten the men who were there about the, what the, micro? Uh, the gender sensitivity. So I think it is a high time that we have been enlightened that uh, we need to, to support uh, gender equality and to fight for those who are vulnerable to those who cannot fight for their for their own. Uh, in our own country, Kenya, <clears throat> it was just announced an, another day, like uh, in Kadara constituency, 20 girls have been impregnated. Now, my question is, how are we going to go and help these ladies? How can we intervene and prevent more cases of impregnation uh, of these young girls? Thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed. Maybe we can have a final one. You introduce yourself and yes, then... Take on that. Yes, please. That's all right. Thank you, thank you, Lydia. Thank you, Lydia. Uh, this is Collins. I represent the Anglican Church of Kenya. I'm the Gender-Based Violence Programs Champion in the Anglican Church. Uh, allow me to thank uh, uh, Father Evangelos for the good presentation that actually uh, gives us uh, an overview of what is happening in this subject of gender and uh, gender justice and gender-based violence. Uh, my, my greatest concern, because I also serve from the church context, uh, yes, this, the challenges that Father enlisted about Maybe we would call them perhaps the obstacles to addressing gender justice and gender-based violence within the church context. You realize that when it comes to uh, addressing these challenges, then the head of the church or the management of the churches are, the, are sometimes the bigger problem in this, because actually when you look at the challenges that have been enlisted, yes, if you can mobilize the congregants to join in the forces to address gender justice and gender-based violence, but then the church leadership have all this context. I don't know whether to term it a stigma or to term it, uh, they call it datifying the name of the church for lack of a better language. 
you realize that sometimes the head of these churches do not want such cases to be addressed in church because they look at the church as a holy place. They look at the church as a place of moral teachings. And, and so when such cases are reported or when such cases are being handled within the church context and you require the support of the leadership of the church, then you realize somehow there are hurdles and there are obstacles based or that are connected to the challenges that have been shared with Father. So my concern is how then should we prepare ourselves or how then should we force ourselves to first get in touch with the leadership of the churches, to first address this advice from the church leadership as we go down so that we take a, a, a top a top bottom approach when it comes to the church context thank you well, thank you very much indeed for that input i can see several other hands up but i think we have another session of 30 minutes so we will raise more questions there but now i want to give to dr les moran and then i hand over to uh, Father Evangelos and GS to respond in very few minutes so that we can ask the rest of the questions in, in the next session for question and answer. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Lydia, for giving me the opportunity. And thank you, dear brother, Father Evangelos, for the wonderful presentation you have made. Deeply, deeply appreciated. Uh, just one question possibly and this question has to do with power because uh, you have mentioned several times about the issue of power and power and power how it is being uh, appropriated by men or how it has been given to men and boys now the, the question is how then do boys and men misuse this power how are these powers being misused? Thank you. Um, so sorry, I have to raise my hand at this point, just to add to your question. And he also said that we need to review the power that we have. So in addition to that, how do we review the power that we have? Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the wonderful uh, questions that have been raised. And I'll start with the reference from Zimbabwe. And uh, it's true. Um, we, 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 in most instances, blame men and boys. Well, we should actually look at uh, the cause of why they are doing this, which is uh, the society that they have grown in, and therefore try and transform uh, the society that they have grown in. And if I can connect that with the, the question uh, from Reverend Desmore, it's about power. <clears throat> How do they misuse the power that they have? Um, because if you are uh, um, the husband in a, in a family, and you, ha you, you are told you are the head, and so you are the decision maker and all of this, and then you do not share that position uh, with, uh, with your husband, with your children. And then anybody who, who does anything against what you say, then uh, you, 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 you become violent to them. Then you are misusing that, uh, that position. Therefore, that's why I say we review these positions that we have given to men. If we say men are the decision makers of a family, then what is our theology teaching? Don't we teach that a man and woman come together and become one? What is this one thing that we have been talking about? Are we then dividing it when it comes to decision making uh, that it is with a man and not with a woman? So we have to kind of review what we consider as being a man or being a boy in a village. A boy in a village, uh, for example, um, uh, will beat up girls uh, because he thinks he has more, he's more powerful. 
We have to review this because it's what we teach. We keep teaching, uh, teaching our boys that you have the power. You are bigger. You are better than the girls. We have to review this so that then we can, uh, we can stop um, blaming men and boys because it's within their society. They have been socialized to think this way and therefore act differently. Power is either positive or negative. If uh, you take power from people, then you will oppress them. You will dominate them. But if you take power with others, you will empower them, you will work with them, and you will show them the potential of what they have. Because if the girls and boys are empowered, then they will, uh, the girls and women are, emp are empowered, then they will uh, do as expected, and they won't actually be, uh, be thinking that they are lesser. Leveren uh, Nathaniel from Ghana, how or you say that? How do we intervene when uh, we 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 see people, for example, uh, going through gender-based violence? First of all, um, is to 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 save whoever is being battered. For example, that lady who was being lynched. The first thing was to save that person. That's very important. Uh, don't put yourself in danger, uh, but try your best. Call police. Invite other people to help you. To to first of all separate this. This is the first step. Even in families, women who are going through gender-based violence in their own families, first of all, remove them from that family. Uh, not because you want to kill that marriage, but because you want, first of all, to fix that marriage before she comes back into that. And two, use that as an advantage, uh, as a place to start the conversation. Uh, preach about it in your society. Have youth groups uh, discuss it, women group, men groups uh, discuss. Now that it is already in the media, this is the best opportunity to deal with this uh, kind of things. If a, a female violates another female um, or a male violates another male, is that gender justice? If they are doing that because they consider the other ones lesser, uh, whether they are male or female, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If uh, the, 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 the violence comes because of the fact that they are male or female, then that's uh, gender-based violence. Samuel, you, you already mentioned about Christ, and I, I'm sorry that I didn't uh, talk much about uh, uh, scripture and Christ and all of this, but because this was only to, to, to instigate our conversation. Uh, men should join for sure, as you said, and, uh, and how then do we prevent the, the impregnation of the, of the teenagers? Is to speak more about sex and sexuality uh, to the youth and also to even uh, uh, senior Sunday school kids because even primary school kids uh, are, are going through this. But the church always have uh, shies away from talking about sex and sexuality because of the culture we are in in Africa. But the church should actually find ways to create other ways to, to discuss sex and sexuality to even kids um, who are in higher classes in high school because when they join uh, uh, the secondary school, and, and colleges, then they do a lot of things that, um, uh, that they are unaware of. And I think that's the beginning. We have to sensitize and capacity build them. Collins, you have uh, asked two questions, and these are the last ones. The challenges uh, that the church, uh, the church leaders, most church leaders never went through any sensitization or any learning on gender uh, justice. And uh, that's not actually because they have done anything wrong. It's because uh, nobody took them through this. And most of the time when they hear a gender justice issue, they send their gender desk officers. They do not attend themselves. And I'm really happy that the general secretary has called this forum today. And uh, most of the church leaders are already here. It's important, general secretary, that you help us to bring uh, most of the senior, senior church leaders because they do not actually know much about gender justice. And that's why they impede a lot of the work done by people who are well-versed on this within their own churches. And I hope even if you, uh, it's uh, calling, uh, giving a, a different topic that is of discussion, and then one of the topics in there is on gender justice, that it can be done. Uh, thank you very much. I think the GS will respond to anything that I've left out. Thank you. Oh, well, I, I don't think there's anything you left out. That therefore, I think in the interest of time, let's move on. Thank you very much, Father Vangelos. 
Thank you very much, yes, Father Evangelos, and those who have asked questions, you continue uh, responding to them and listening to one another. So at this time, I will welcome in the next session, Reverend Dr. Lesmore Ezekiel. He's my colleague, and he's the director for Peace, Diaconia, and Development as well as a, a champion for gender justice. Over to you, Dr. Les Moray. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Lydia, and thank you, uh, Father Evangelos, uh, for the very interesting presentation that have indeed uh, set the base for us to take off in our regional reflections, uh, regional storytelling, and of course, the recommendations that we that will be followed in terms of how then do we deepen, deepen the message of uh, gender justice? How do we deconstruct and make even gender as it is, being a social construct, uh, to be more uh, accommodative and that others will understand it, that it is not just about women and girls like uh, Father Evangelos have uh, re-emphasized over and over and over again. It has been misunderstood over time. So we would now go into regional reflections or regional storytelling and some uh, eminent persons have been identified who would speak. And at the end, of course, we would have the opportunity to also uh, give in our inputs and to also uh, ask uh, appropriate questions that will further enlighten and inform uh, participants. Now, without waste of time, I would want to invite uh, uh, Deacon Adebayo Antoni Kende, who is the ecumenical officer of the Church of the Lord uh, in Nigeria, who would speak from a West African perspective in terms of our various stories and reflections on issues relating to gender justice. So Deacon uh, Kende, please, the platform is yours now. You have five minutes. Thank you very much. Um, I have to be careful not to extend many courtesies and greetings within my five minutes. So I just say uh, good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Um, Christian, if you may let me uh, put up the slide. Sure. Yes, um, I also want to start by using this opportunity to thank the AACC uh, under the leadership of our General Secretary and the Director uh, for Gender Justice, uh, Dr. Mombeki and uh, Dr. Lydia, respectively, uh, for extending to me these invitations. Dear friends, dear sisters and brothers in Christ, I bring to you one ecumenical greetings from my home in Lagos. The art of the ravaging coronavirus pandemic in Nigeria, and shamefully the center of the rising cases of violence against women in Nigeria at the moment, which sadly is not too different from the situation reports in other West African countries. Since February, when the first case was reported in Lagos, our media space has been abashed with almost daily news of either a father raping his daughter or daughters or cases of gang rape and molestation on an alarming increase. Um, one of such cases recently was uh, a case of a lady that was, uh, that was raped and murdered inside uh, a church which is quite very uh, painful. But of a truth, violence against women is not a shadow or something committed by spirits. It has been a crisis for centuries, even before the days of slave trade, where women are consistently raped and their children sold. Colonialism created housing policies in the cities where a black man could not stay with loved ones women have limited liberal rights and no protection for harassment. Does that sound like an excuse? Actually, 
Women in color and young people of faith are not exempted in the menace as we have not only lead the abuses, but also use our position to perpetrate deepening the culture of silence. And let me just share two further examples to collaborate what I have earlier stated. In Ibadan, Sharon was pushed almost naked out of the home she shared with her husband. She's 30 years old and pregnant with her first baby. Her husband, one 36 years old, Allah was angry with her and said she will remain outside for two to three hours until she's satisfied that that was enough punishment for her before he would let her back into their house. Sometimes he beat her even in her current state. Our offense, Allah said, she talks too much, food is never ready, and she allows her mother to interfere in our marriage all during this lockdown. And this boils down to the issue of power that we talked about earlier. Another example is the case of 22-year-old Monisola has just returned from the marriage ceremony of a relation in the outskirts of Ikorodu, where I live, when her husband, 22-year-old Olushegun, in a fit of rage, attacked her. Mr. Olushegun said his wife disobeyed him in attending the ceremony and as punishment, act off his right hand with a machet, according to the police. According to the recent UNICEF statistics, in 2018, thank you, that's okay. In 2018, the, the estimated adolescent by birth rate globally was 44 births per 1,000 girls, aged between 15 and nine, to 19. In West Africa, in West and Central Africa, this figure stood at 115 baht, the highest regional rate in the whole world. Countries such as Central African Republic, Niger, Chad, and Mali topped the list of countries with highest adolescent birth rates above 178. In, in the 2010 to 2015 period, over 45% of women between 20 to 24 have reported to have given birth for their first time by age 18. How about conducting some simple research within the AACC member churches of how many teenagers? Okay, how about conducting some people research, some simple research within the AACC member churches of how many teenagers that have been forcibly put into a family way just between 2018 till date. I am very confident that we would have to close our eyes in shame from what will likely be the outcome of this research. I humbly challenge the AACC to bring this on as this would be the, very, the first stage of owing up to our mistakes as churches and the beginning of our healing. No doubt. Women and girls, women and men, sorry, girls and boys, urban and rural population in West Africa are being impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Immediate impact include reduced income and access to basic needs, just to government lockdown, changing gender roles in the household and increased gender-based violence, since sometimes the only activity of a jobless man at home Thank you. Have, will, have will be to pronounce on his wife, to pounce Thank on his you. wife. Thank oh, you. My Thank five minutes done already? Yes, uh, except if you have a conclusion. I give you one minute to conclude. Okay, okay. I have made five recommendations here, but I would like to speak uh, to the last recommendation, um, and then the slide can be shared. Uh, Finally, the, the AACC, through its member churches and partner, to accompany churches and gender-based institutions on the continent in providing training on positive and care fatherhood 
which aims at building capacity in terms of skill, knowledge, attitude on the role of youth and men as caring partner in promoting gender equity and positive behaviors towards women, towards women. Under this approach, men and boys are mobilized to form groups with a senior male mentor and are trained on positive parenting models, protection of women and girls from adolescence from violence, child marriage, teen pregnancy, female genital mutilation. Thank you. I'll be glad to welcome questions, but uh, I know that I've not been able to speak to uh, the paper as I would love to because of time constraint. All right, thank you very much for the opportunity uh, to bring this forward. Thank you. Thank you most sincerely, uh, uh, Dick and Kende, for the presentation. The time is quite limited, so it, it has to be more of identifying key targets and uh, distilling out to the, to the participants. You have raised something critical, which I, I take home, and I hope that we would all take home, which is the culture of silence. And, and so how does the culture of silence play out? We will look at that in our subsequent uh, discussion. Thank you, Dick Kendi. Now, may I invite uh, Reverend uh, Mwanza Mato uh, from South Africa, who would uh, give us the next uh, presentation. I have a difficulty uh, pronouncing the name, but please, may I kindly invite you to introduce yourself properly for us. Thank you very much, uh, and good afternoon to everybody. Uh, Zwai Mchobile from South Africa, um, representing the UPCSA, the Uniting Presbyterian Church in Southern Africa. And thank you very much for this privilege of uh, being invited to be one of the speakers um, in this platform. Let me start by saying, I think it is just to view and treat each other as created equally in the eyes of the Lord. And I think given a space, men should contribute positively and take a lead in bringing about gender justice in communities and in churches. And it is the role of men too, to educate other men on issues of GBV. Telling a blind eye is not right. And there are a few things that I will believe will make a big difference in gender justice. Let me mention a few in the five allocated minutes, and these are the first one, patriarchy. Patriarchy is a sin. And I think it is high time that the men should acknowledge the fact that patriarchy is a sin and there is no excuse. There is no way we can justify patriarchy. It is our role as men to acknowledge that the way we use the power that we have to exclude those that we view as being weak is sinful. It cannot be justified. And we need to acknowledge that God never intended that men should abuse their masculinity against women and children, that men should refrain taking all critical decisions and exclude women, even when those decisions might affect women. In our churches, there is a still a serious bad attitude that women cannot be in leadership positions. Why? Unless men, of course, decide that the time is right, they can take the lead because we want to use them as just dolls dress in windows in our shops so that we can get a pet in our shoulders that we are doing well. And this way of doing things cannot be correct at any given time, be it be in the communities that we live in and or in churches that we use as fellowship centers. And we need to acknowledge that men are privileged. And most of the time we speak and in a privileged position. If only men can acknowledge that right from birth, we were privileged. 
It was and is a dream of every man to have a firstborn child born male. But why is it that we still hang on to those beliefs? Because we know we have privileges. If you put a girl child and a boy child together, men will always prefer a boy child. And a boy child will get all the education, all the knowledge, and even the inheritance that is meant for the other one, because he happened to be a boy. Why is it that a girl child is always told that her home will be where she is married to? Why do we strip a girl child of a true identity when she gets married by forcing them to take the surnames of the husbands and not the other way around? Why is it that even in the 21st century, we still have a problem with people with double barrel? And why is it that men are not the ones who are taking these um, surnames or a surname from the female side. Why is it? It is because of our privileges. Why is it that always boys are the ones to inherit even when they are not firstborns? And anyway, why is inheritance all about gender? Why is it all about being male? Men should treat their children equally and love them equally. Home resources should be distributed equally, regardless of who you are and of your gender. Women also, we need to get to a point in our churches where we recognize them as being having a potential in the leadership roles that they should play. Men should acknowledge that women are also created in the image and likeness of God. That it cannot be in the 21st century that we still regard them as weak and less important. Women cannot be asking the question, on whether women have mental capacity or whether when would when or whether when about to be appointed to a leadership position if they have what it takes to be in that position. A question which is not posed to men when appointed to the same position. We do not ask qualifications, we do not ask their mental capacity, we do not ask their capabilities. Why are those questions asked when it comes to men? Men should acknowledge the mental capacity of women and discourage the narrative that their place is in the kitchen, that it is not the role of women to be cleaners in our society, especially in our congregations, that men also should boldly occupy that space. It is our responsibility and our role and our duty to create safe heavens in our congregations. I strongly believe that men should create safe spaces for their families and their homes, especially safe spaces for women and children. It cannot be right that women are not comfortable in their own homes. Women are threatened by their own husbands. Women are afraid of their own sons. It cannot be right that men are seen as trash by their own spouses because of their bullying and abusive behaviors. I call upon all men to change their mindset. It is not your responsibility to protect women, but your responsibility to love them. Women are not a commodity. Women are not objects. Women are not things that we can own. They are also created in the image of God. When true love is realized, there won't be a need to protect women from what? Men should make it their responsibility at all times to support women the same way they need support from them. Lastly, empowering men. I believe that it is important that in the time is now to change the mindset of men, it is okay to be normal human beings. Men should stop being tigers that do not cry, but be men with feelings and emotions. Right from childhood, men should be taught what makes a man and be reminded that it is not because Hello. Hello. Uh, we lost the presenter. That we was... lost the presenter. Uh, 
but uh, he was speaking and saying lastly, so I take it that uh, uh, he would share the paper with us and we will continue with uh, conversation thereafter when he reappears. Um, thank you, uh, Reverend, for the presentation. And uh, you have raised critical issues with regards to the challenges of gender justice. And of course, one thing I took note of is naming sin with its name, giving sin its own name. So patriarchy, as you have said, is a sin. And from your presentation, you have also brought in the complexities and complications around the question of gender justice. So may I now invite uh, His Grace, Most Reverend Nyabogo, who, who happens to also be the Vice President of AACC for a presentation. Uh, he would be speaking from the Central African region. The Most Reverend Martin Nyabogo from Burundi is the Archbishop here. Is the Archbishop in attendance? Okay. Uh, while we wait for uh, the Archbishop, maybe we'll give him the last slot. Uh, let me invite uh, Mr. Grace, Mr. Grace Mongo, uh, to make a presentation. He is uh, from Congo. Is Merci. Very good. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Grace will be speaking in French. And so for those of us who do not understand French, uh, please, you would see at the bottom of your screen, you would see interpretation. So you can click on the interpretation there, you choose English, so that when he speaks in French, uh, you would have a translation in English. So just at the bottom of your screen, you will see interpretation. And click on the uh, uh, interpretation and select English. So, uh, Mr. Grace, over to you, please. Merci pour la parole accordée. Thank you very much for giving me the floor. Yes. Hello. Ah, merci pour la parole. Merci. Okay. Merci. Thank you for the floor. Uh, thank you for the floor. First of all, I would like to thank the Executive Secretary of AACC, Reverend Dr. Fidon Mombeki, but also Reverend Dr. Lydia, but also uh, Mrs. Christine, and our Youth Secretary, Mr. Collins, for giving me this privilege to speak on behalf of the youth of our organization, which is AACC, on the theme of the role of uh, men in improving gender justice in Africa. My name is Gras Mongobia from Evangelical Church in Congo and delegate to the uh, AACC. Our presentation is structured in two five points. First of all, we have the context and issues of the theme, objectives of the theme, causes and consequences of gender-based violence, recommendations of the youth, and the conclusion. With regard to the context, the existence of violence in our Christian communities is not something we can ignore. The campaigns of sensitization led in our churches have highlighted humiliations of women battered in front of their children uh, and other family members, family har sexual harassment of women and girls in even in churches and the family, forced sexual relations of which women are victims by their partners, acts of incest perpetrated by fathers on their biological daughters. Those domestic violences existed, of course, but these have increased uh, terribly because of the lockdown as one of the prevention strategy against COVID. The AACC had the courage to, bre to break the silence on the topic relating to sexuality by denouncing gender-based violence. It is important to recognize that violence uh, affects physical, emotional, and psychological integrity of the victim. 
the acts of psychological and sexual violences committed by church members, whatever their function, raise a question of evil. We can read it from Genesis chapter 6, verse 11, and Ecclesiastes, uh, the objective. For us, the youth, the objectives of this theme et trouver les approches de consist of identifying the causes and find approaches of solutions to all gender-based violence by men in the churches as well in the continent during and after COVID-19. It is important to mention that there are many consequences and causes concerning gender-based violence. With regard to the causes, we have causes at the level of women and the young girls. We mentioned two ignorance by women and young girls of the laws which protect them. The culture, which is uh, an impediment to the promotion of the women, especially in Africa. And for men and young girls, boys, it's about the way girls are clothing, are dressing, but also consumption of drugs and alcohol. As concerns the consequences, gender-based violences can cause a lot of consequences and they can be at, the le at, at different levels. We can mention some at the level of the church, for example, in the mental, physical, and social level. Recommendations. The youth from the AACC recommend the following. Sensitize and train women and young girls on their rights. Care for the victims of violence by supporting them financially and psychologically. The women should break the silence around the violences they undergo. Educate the young girls and women to dress properly. To set up activities in education, grouping men and women, boys and girls, ready to, to, to get married in our communities to reduce the risk of violence noticed in the households. And sensitize the women and the youth Nature de la violence sexiste. on the deep causes and the nature of gender-based violence. To design programs on gender-based violence at the Sunday school to inform and sensitize the young girls, adolescents on how to do to fight against that problem. To denounce the bad interpretation of biblical texts which do not give access to victim of violence to resort to a juridical system. To reinforce the collaboration Thank you. between local authorities and religious leaders on prevention and fight against gender-based violence. Intensification of campaigns of community merci. mobilization in our merci, churches merci, in terms of fight against alcohol and drug consumption. Merci beaucoup. Conclusion. Merci, merci beaucoup, Gracias. You, do you have something to, 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 to state at the conclusion that is very pertinent? Just conclusion. All right. Okay, he's giving just a conclusion. Uh -huh. In short, many research done on the continent and in our churches show that gender-based violence keep increasing. Sur cette violence, accept AACC need to, breeze, to break the silence, to accept the evidence, own the facts, and opt for denouncing and sanctions against the perpetrators, which is the main condition so that the members of our Protestant communities can change their attitudes, practices, and behavior. Thank you for your attention. Merci, merci beaucoup, uh, uh, Grace. Thank you, Grace. especially for those who speak English or who would not need a translation, uh, you, you still click. Click uh, the interpretation icon there and uh, click off, off uh, from interpretation. Then uh, you would have a clear view, though so you will listen uh, clearly. Uh, thank you, Grace, for, for the presentation. On behalf of the youth, I would say the youth group, uh, from AACC and the wider African context. Uh, you have raised very pertinent issues that we need to pay attention on as we uh, continue with our conversation. Uh, however, 
you have raised something that is uh, a bit controversial that we will have to look at it together. Uh, that issue that you have raised is about that girls or women must learn to dress properly. Uh, as a moderator, I have the privilege here to say this is a very controversial issue that we need to look at it closely together. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, dressing, uh, whether to entice or whatever, is that a major issue of uh, increasing the incidences of gender-based violence? So yes. I would allow us to discuss collectively and uh, build consensus uh, around that. Uh, so uh, I understand that Archbishop Martin Yabogo from Burundi is not with us. So we will continue into the session of questions and, and answers. So you can indicate on the sidebar uh, on the participants, uh, you would indicate by raising your hands. I would uh, go strictly by that. And when I give you a chance to speak, you will not speak more than two minutes. If you speak more than two minutes, I will switch off your, your, your microphone. So try to be religious and uh, follow the two minute maximum and a minimum of few seconds. Uh, I see a hand of uh, Hannington, Hannington or Dara. Hannington, Dara, I invite you for your question or comment. Your one minute or two starts now. Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead, Huntington. You are hearing me? Yes, 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 we can hear you. Thank you. I'm very delighted. I'm a participant from the Quaker Church in Nairobi, West in Kenya. I present the Quaker men in our church and I'm very pleased to participate. But my question was just, just coming on the gender. And my question is this as we narrow, there is this nature of a man being man, and we don't open up ourselves even if you are. Hello? Yes, yes, go ahead. Uh, even if you have been uh, mislated, like for men, there are some young boys who are being uh, sexually mislated by elder women. We don't address it. Two, you have somebody that's talking about the dress code. When people put on small clothes which are not vulnerable, they are vulnerable to being raped, and that's now being being molested on the gender, whereby they have been themselves who have initiated the, the drive for somebody to do that. Three, uh, I would like us to have a forum whereby we could address whereby, like for example, when we were trying to prepare this, there was an incident whereby the, the security agency were down to rape a small going child in one of our state, which I was not pleased, and I think we should address if that is being done by the security agents. What do we do as a child? So please, it's a good forum, and I'm happy to be Kenya. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Huntington. Uh, I see CCG, CCG raised raised his hands or hands, uh, her hands. Yeah. CCG, please introduce Hello. yourself properly. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, CCG. Good, good. I am, I am Hilary Kojisaki from Ghana with the Christian Council of Ghana. Um, mine is more of a contribution than a question. Um, I'm happy to be part of this and my my joy extends to the fact that um, we are recognizing the role of men and to invite men to the table or to the discussion of gender justice. Um, I, I do agree with Reverend when they said that if men are not at the table, then it probably we are talking about women and girls justice and no more gender justice. What I would want to um, find out is how do we um, surmount this hurdle given the deep rootedness of some of these occurrences or some of these occurrences have their roots from our culture, how, how 
we start our socialization, how we grow up, how we, we we've lived with it for a while. And so how do we surmount this problem, addressing it from the cultural perspective? That would be my question. Thank you, and I'm over. Thank you, thank you. Um, I noticed Galaxy, Galaxy, what is your name? I only see Galaxy on the screen. So Galaxy, can you introduce yourself properly? Your two minutes starts now. We can hear you. Okay. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, I have a few, 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 maybe questions and comments. Uh, thank you for just creating that greatest opportunity to bring us together. Uh, that is really, uh, it's, it's a way for change. So uh, my question is uh, the issue of uh, reviewing like power. Uh, we understood that gender is a relation between men and women, or it's about powerfulness and powerlessness. So uh, if it's about powerfulness and power, have less, not having power, uh, and power is everything. Power is as local congregation, and power is at the top, like leadership of uh, our, our churches. So when we say uh, power review, where should we start it? And how should we start it? Uh, power is like, it seems like it's so to just uh, break it down. So uh, if it's really uh, very important to review our power, uh, bring a change for this like gender justice or gender equality or to create a world in where we enjoy equality uh, from the perspective of having the image of God all right, we, we seem to we seem to miss out on uh, him, but his question is very clear with regards to reviewing power, and I'm sure Father Evangelos will respond to that question when we come to it. So thank you, brother, for the question from Ethiopia. Uh, may I now invite? His Eminence, uh, Reverend Dr. Samson Ayokule, uh, the president of the Nigerian Baptist uh, Convention and the, the president of Christian Association of Nigeria. Please, uh, Reverend Ayokule, your two minutes starts now. Thank you, Dr. Lesmo, and the General Secretary of AACC and all participants. Mine is identifying ways by which we can overcome the uh, gender inequality or gender violence, gender justice. Number one, the church needs to press for legislation against gender violence. Many acts of gender violence such as battering, uh, disparity in pay at job, uh, workplace, rape, uh, etc. So we suppress those in political power to make sure that we have effective legi legislation against these uh, acts. And not only legislation, the legislation with appropriate sanction so that those who commit them may not go scot free any longer. Number two, the church has a role to play in teaching deliberate and consistent teaching against uh, us of uh, gender injustice. For example, I see polygyny, which we usually mistake for polygamy, marrying the idea of marrying, the practice of marrying more than one wife as gender injustice. If a woman is not qualified to marry more than one husband at the same time, man should not have liberty to marry more than one wife at, I mean, in his, in his lifetime. So it is inequality to allow man to be acquiring wife as commodity. And the woman is seen as just a raw material, a commodity you can continue to add to, to, to what you have had before. Therefore, the church must be at the vanguard of 
preaching, teaching against such practices. We must teach about gay child education. Because if people are enlightened, the ignorance is removed, it is difficult to enslave them. So also we teach against all these child marriage and all other abuses that are happening to, 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 to the gay child. Equally, we must recognize that we have abuse on some men, like mother forcing the first son to have sexual relationship with her and mm. getting pregnant for the son. All these things are what the church should be at the vanguard of teaching against. And when we have people who practice all things, we should not expose them. The oh. culture is of exposing them must be taught by the church so that Thank we will not aid and abet what is, I mean, violence, which is against the spirit of the living God. We must Thank teach you. love also. Yes. Love Thank is you. very important. When you love, you see your neighbor as yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Your Eminence. You have raised two pertinent issues that we will have to discuss, maybe ongoing, the question of legislation, and again, uh, the question of bright price, uh, whether we, we need to abolish bright price in Africa, or how do we sustain that? Uh, so the various dimension, the cultural dimension of uh, gender justice uh, you have brought in. Thank you very much. Let me now invite uh, uh, Ishimwe. Uh, is it Ishimwe? Ishimwe, uh, please, your two minutes starts now. Ishimwe. Ishimwe Ahmed. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Sorry, uh, yes, it was just yes. so. Actually, I'm going to speak in French. I don't know if the translator is ready. Oh, okay. Uh, then uh, we. Okay. But you, okay. you you seem to speak good English. So, and I see the both of the, the participants speak more of English. Could you kindly be gracious? It's better for the French speaker also to. <laughs> to get in touch with the okay. subject. That's, that's very fine. May I, request, may I request the English speakers to switch uh, at the bottom there, like we did during the presentation. Just switch to French so that the translator will translate the French uh, address in, into English. Please, Please, go ahead. Okay. Um, Your two minutes starts now. Mon nom c'est Ahmed Ishimwe. My name is Ahmed Ishimwe from Burundi, from the Evangelical Church in Burundi. My concern is the following. It has been said that COVID-19 has contributed to increase in the case of uh, gender-based violence. My first concern is the following. Can we reject all the damage to the virus, to COVID-19? Or I could say the fact that people were, con uh, were not living together, that was hiding the fact that they couldn't live together. When they spend one month living together and they start fighting and abusing uh, each other, can we reject the thought to, to the pandemic? I don't think so. It's as if uh, I read somewhere where there is fuel on the ground. You will know that there is fuel and you bring a match and you light a candle and everything set in fire. But we have to know that people must learn to live together, whether it is during the pandemic or even after the pandemic. We must educate people to live together. That was my first concern. My second concern, it has been said that the church must speak from one voice and to denounce all those abuses and recognize that there are abuses. But I say myself, but even within the church, there are still 
some abuses, there is no consideration of women. Uh, gender consideration even in the church in some churches where women cannot speak in public where women cannot even preach from the pulpit thank you merci, can we merci. say that even within the church merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. may i invite uh, reverend afram you have a minute reverend afram yes yes thank you very much doctor um, I have two concerns. Firstly, I saw an interesting video yesterday, and I'm bringing it to the fore so we all look at it. It was a video of a sex worker, a prostitute, who was paid to actually sleep or have sex with a madman. I understand it, it involves taking advantage of the vulnerability of this, this madman, but he seemed to have enjoyed the act. So to extend this same argument, when people are adults, I understand there's rape, I understand the farmer, but in this case, where the adult himself or herself also enjoys this taking of advantage of his or her vulnerability, can that also be termed a gender-based or sexual-based sexual violence? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, Collins, Collins, you have 30 seconds. Thank you. I, I just want to appreciate, but then my concern is... Uh, in addressing all this, uh, maybe I would urge us also to think about uh, uh, healing and reintegration of survivors and maybe the victims of uh, gender-based violence back to realize their, uh, their life. Because most of them, after the incidences, they are really demoralized. And maybe going forward, we also look at uh, programs such as behavior change and uh, positive masculinity uh, and also psychoeducation services so that we add more awareness on gender justice and gender-based violence in the society. You. Thank right. you. May I invite uh, Peter? Peter um, Zimbi. You have 30 uh -oh. seconds. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Um, first of all, I would like to comment that this is a very good initiative. Uh, as for long, we've been taking this as um, an, initi an initiative for women only. Uh, but then my question is, since we are targeting even the period after COVID-19, looking at the gender injustices that are taking place in Africa and around, uh, don't you think it's um, uh, uh, quite commendable that at this particular time in Bible colleges or Bible schools, we should introduce uh, gender justice course of which most of our church leaders should take part in it and then impart the same to, to, to other church leaders, most Thank of you. which are men. And in that Thank way, we'll be able to, to achieve what we, we want. Thank you for that recommendation. Uh, Reverend Taure, Taure Emmanuel, you have 30 seconds. Reverend Taure Emmanuel. All right, uh, if Reverend Taure is not there, Okay. I would, I, would, uh, I am there. Oh, oh you Hello. are there. So you have 30 seconds, please. Okay, my, my brief submission is that um, the church is, is a respectable and a prophetic voice of our society. And mm -hmm. therefore, we need to push for a gender justice um, common regime for Africa that is contextual to our cultural realities. I was looking at something like, uh, if you remember the Beijing Declaration for, for Women of from the roadmap of 1995, then the declaration of 2015. Can we not, uh, as a SEC, push for, for some conversations and dialogue that can actually come up with a charter uh, for Africa, pushed by men in terms of gender justice? I think that way it can then be adopted and signed by member states in Africa, African Union or SADC, so, so that at least we can have these actions um, on a blueprint. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Emmanuel, for the recommendation. And just to also mention swiftly that there are a lot of documents, a lot of policy documents at the African Union level, at the AACC and all of that. Yeah. Ours is how do we make this document, how do we make these charters, this convention to function for the betterment of all. So uh, now the question uh, that have been raised, I would invite the speakers just giving them one minute each, starting with uh, Father Evangelos, 
uh, Dick and uh, Kane Day, and uh, also uh, Reverend Nzua, who they would they would respond in and grace just one minute each for you to respond to any question that have been raised uh, or a recommendation that you would want to make. So I invite Father Evangelos one minute. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, maybe I didn't say this, but let me say this, that power is always neutral, but humans then manipulate it to be either negative or positive. Those who manipulate it to the positive end end up threatening, coercing others, and uh, dominating them. Those who take it as positive uh, use it in an equitable way. They share it, and uh, they, they realize that power is inherently uh, God-given. And uh, therefore, what we do is many men use resources that they have at their exposure to manipulate women and girls. And what we do now as a church is to restore, what we call gender justice is to restore this power. The originally God-given power, dignity, and stewardship responsibility is given in Genesis 1. Uh, so that then what happened after sin, after the sin that came later on in the, uh, chapter 3, uh, man now started, uh, men and women started, started manipulating the power that God had already given us. Uh, as equals. So what we need to do is liberate the dominated genders. Most of them are men and women. Uh, I, I mean are women and girls, but like we say, it also don't forget the men and boys who are also uh, having challenges uh, with this. Uh, I will add more uh, before the notes are circulated. I will add more on power uh, and I'm sure everybody will get a chance. Thank you. Thank you. So as men, we must be willing to give up power so that uh, life will be good for all of us. Yes. Uh, and don't, can, uh, 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 Reverend Resmore, uh, don't yes. forget that nobody will ever give you power. You have to take it yes. by force. Yes, very good. So the women also will have to do extra work because uh, men seem not to give out the power that they have enjoyed for centuries and generations. So, but uh, here we are platforms of advocates that we can give of power beginning from our own homes, our place of work our community. So, Deacon uh, Kende, uh, you have one minute, and it starts now. Thank you, Reverend. Uh, even though I, I wasn't too happy that I was not able to read through my notes, but I would just say that uh, over the years, uh, the churches has fallen victim of uh, taking the lead uh, in the culture of silence. Um, there are diverse and countless experiences of how uh, many teenage pregnancies, even perpetrated by so-called um, reverend and priests, are swept under carpet. Uh, and then, uh, because uh, we put the name of the church uh, to say that because of the dignity of the church, because of um, what people would say, we don't want to name and shame these uh, perpetrators. Uh, I think going forward within the, uh, the framework of the work that ACC has committed itself to do with regards to raising the champion, uh, we must also uh, put the, the, the culture of opening up, uh, naming and uh, bringing uh, to shame, in so to say, those who are at the center of uh, this violence. And then we have a role to also accompany the government. Uh, we have okay. a role to accompany our church leaders, and we have a role to accompany our youth uh, to uh, uh, live uh, with these ethics. Thank you, Eshegon. Thank you, thank you for for the for the summary. May I may I now invite uh, Reverend Zwe for for his closing remarks? Uh, one minute. Thank you, sir. Just a few things that concern me, um, the issue of the dress code, for girls especially. Why is it that we blame girls for our inability to control ourselves? Who buys or do we contribute in their wardrobes that we will have a, a say in what they buy and where they buy it? I think I have a problem with that. Um, don't we rather intrude in they are freedom of choice for they are human beings with rights also, like us as men. And uh, thirdly, 
who have we ever had girls complain when we wear shorts? Where have we ever had them complain when we wear tight um, track suits? They don't complain. Why? Because they can control themselves better than us. I have a problem with us when we actually shift our own problems and project them to others in the name of girls. That that's, to me is a problem. Power. Secondly, power is not an issue for me. Okay. It is just the abuse of power, which is a problem. Yes. Problem. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much for even that uh, aspect that you have raised. Probably is indicating that men are rather weak, not strong, as we project uh, ourselves. Uh, if a woman's dress will take us somewhere else, then we have a question of probably men at the weaker uh, vessel, not a stronger one. So, but thank you very much. Those are dimensions that we need to look at. Lastly, uh, Grace, may I invite Grace to give his closing remarks? We have to go to the interpretation. One minute for you, Grace. One minute. Uh, is Grace there? Uh. Une fois je t'ai vu m'excuser, je t'ai déconnecté pour... Uh... Ok, sorry, I was disconnected because of uh, internet, so no... Oh, ok, okay. so please, yes. Ok, he wants to repeat the question, ok. Yes, one minute, one minute for him. Ah, merci. Ok. Merci pour la part. Thank you for... The, uh, to conclude, we the youth, we must involve ourselves, we must engage ourselves because we are, we are with adolescents of Sunday school. Now it's up to us youth to disseminate this problematic, to disseminate the teaching in our churches, congregations, parishes, so that the problem of gender should not be a taboo, but it is a serious problem that the church wants to address and also make sure that the people who are undergoing that violence should be denounced so that Africa may be strong Thank and you. then we can be proud of the church where the youth understand what it is gender-based violence. Thank you. Merci, 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 merci beaucoup. Uh, uh, Grace, for your summary. And now, uh, with uh, delight, I want to hand over back the responsibility to my colleague, Dr. Lydia, for the last bit of our program. Thank you for your participation and all the contributions you have made. We are taking note of that. And we'll, uh, going forward, we will incorporate that in our program. Dr. Lydia, over to you. Thank you. Many thanks indeed, uh, my colleague, Dr. Les More, for moderating that uh, session very efficiently. I also want to thank the, the speakers who have brought out very, very important points. And uh, many of you, all of them have given uh, recommendations. And now because of the, because of time, we have very, uh, uh, only four minutes. I would like to ask if there is somebody with a very burning way forward, what you think we, we should do, you know, going forward. But meanwhile, because we have the chat box, if you have the way forward and you, have not, you are not able to speak because of time, we will really, really appreciate if you put something on the chat box. But I give, uh, just a minute to somebody with a burning way forward. Okay, I assume we have given a lot about uh, recommendations. What I need to say is that we will gather. There's, there's a hand by Peter. There's a yes, hand by Peter. Peter. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah well, I would like to say that if you conduct a lot of trainings on gender justice, equipping us with the knowledge, I think we'll be able to, to, to assist the areas where we're coming from. So we're just urging you to be conducting a lot of trainings so that we, 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 yeah. we gather the, the much needed knowledge. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Peter. In, indeed, that came up very powerfully about the, the knowledge gap, and thank you for adding to that. I assume others would still be writing so that we gather these together and uh, inform you the way forward or the next steps based on your recommendations. I also need to share, to, 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 uh, to tell you that we will sh be sharing um, a, a questionnaire which we kindly ask you to fill. We will send to you via email after this uh, consultation. Um, and then all the notes will be shared online. So uh, at this time, I will ask uh, our General Secretary to give the closing remarks. And then I also recognize the, the presence of, Mr. Or, of Dr. Samuel Kabwe from Eden, that is Ecumenical Disability Advocacy Network. He will be the one to close for us with prayer after doc, Dr. Mombeki has given the closing remarks. Over to you, Dr. Mombeki. Thank you very much. I hope I have unmuted successfully. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Sometimes you never know. Um, let me close by again thanking you for your very high spirited participation. It's, I would like to emphasize that those, all of you who have taken part are recommended by women who know your role in enhancing gender justice. You are the champion. Now, without going into much details, I would like to ask that some of you would probably volunteer to help us as we continue to design uh, how we launch this movement, because you are going to be the champions because we are very much convinced that in order to address the violence of men, injustice of men towards others or towards each other, they must be addressed mainly by men. Of course, they have been addressed by women, but the resistance, the, the skepticism is always there. But what I have heard today from all of you how you are very strong about uh, the, the rights of everyone to live uh, in, 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 with dignity and justice in all circumstances is exactly what we are trying to do as AACC. I have heard several recommendations, theological, social, um, uh, I don't know, in, in terms of methodologies, in terms of approaches, in terms of um, the target groups. I, I, I'm very thrilled to see the discussion, which should definitely continue. And we are very determined because we believe that it is a conversation like this, if they will continue to be held even in our own member churches, that you have men discussing the role of men not spoken to by women as if they are crying and appealing, but presented by men who are convinced and have a conviction that we are supposed to do something. And we are able. We are going to have a better reception among men than, uh, than men have so far. Maybe we can convince our member churches, our church leaders, not to, to, not to be scared of the conversation not to have this approach of thinking, well, these gender people, they are about to revolutionize and get me out of my seat. It's not about that. Maybe they, we shall reach a point where there is really confidence that we are talking about God-given. I was very much following one who was talking about uh, uh, patriarchy as sin. That's a very strong theological concept, for example. Are we ready to discuss that as churches? And because you are not talking about <clears throat> the victims, you are talking about those people who have a certain concept. 
are we ready to start having theological conversations like that? Patriarchy uh, and the denial of human rights and women's rights to others as sinful acts which need our repentance and reorientation. I, I heard about uh, how we should approach legal systems. I, I would say not only legal systems and legislation, he talked about also appropriate mechanisms of really enforcing uh, th those legislation because in many places they are there, but they're just not abided by and they are not enforced. They're probably difficult to enforce. <clears throat> so I really like to ask you as we continue under the leadership of my sister there to design and develop this movement for men, for, for gender justice, you will join us. Thank you very much and God bless you. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for those closing remarks. Indeed, very, very powerful. We will be calling upon you again for assistance to design this movement. Thank you. I now invite uh, Dr. Samuel Kabwe to close for us with prayer. Shall we pray? Our loving Father, we want to commit ourselves into your hands for this initiative that has been thought of moving from women talking to themselves to creating community of men and women, sharing of power as we should, ensuring that we have love and respect for each other in all our dealings. We pray that you give us knowledge and especially those men that have been in, considered to be champions to understand what gender justice is. We would like to believe that gender justice is both beyond violence uh, to sharing of power in every aspect of it. So, Lord, we commit ourselves into your hands. We pray for commitment to this cause, and we pray, dear Lord, that uh, you will provide all the means that are necessary for the creation and development of this initiative. Dismiss us with your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very, Amen. very much indeed to Amen. everybody. Thank you, Amen. our Amen. GS. Thank you Thank very much. You. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Merci Amen. beaucoup. Thank you. Thank See you next time. Thank you. Yes, it does. And yeah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you too. God bless you too. I forgot to tell you that I'm a priest in the Anglican Church of Kenya. Merci beaucoup. Very good. So very soon you will be a bishop. <laughs> <laughs> I was tried, but because I'm the wrong gender, that's why we are here to discuss these issues. <laughs> very good. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Merci. Thank Au revoir. You. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Bye. Merci beaucoup. Merci Thank you for inviting me. Au revoir Thank tous. You. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. 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 Wonderful. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone.